Hey there, good to see you, beloved of God and of me. Welcome, welcome again to this video. We are starting with uh, a next video within the series. Uh, and I don't have a specific name for that series. But that series is first about laying down principle, uh, principles around what is truth and what is lie. That's very important. So I'm going to spend uh, more time with that one and then on top of that based on that also uh, how do we look at God's Word how is our mindset when studying God's Word do we truly want the truth or do we want our traditional views to stand up and then the, the truth uh, what is the word and then um, hide the truth so to speak at the expense of the truth that's what i wanted to say so uh the question is what's it what's it gonna be so we're going to continue with these principles and uh the last video i started with uh two examples simple examples uh, then i'm going to today i'm going to go through a third one and also after that a big one a bigger example let me put it like that a live example so Let's continue with the slides. So this was the last one uh, in the previous video. So we are not going to go through this, but just for argument's sake, it always begins with taking ownership and you will see that also in the next slide. So that's going to be similar. Let's take it like that. L let's take a look. So another example. Let's read, the gazillion young man or woman dies unexpectedly and no one asks, asks why that is. People know inside in their heart, they know what, there's, what is the, the case, but they, they don't want to know if you know what I mean. They feel intuitively, instinctively, they know what it is, but they don't want to think about it they don't want to be confronted with that mirror with uh, themselves that they made a mistake that they are guilty of making a huge mistake so that the family member dies that's what they don't want to be confronted with so as long as that's the case you will not learn i will not learn no one will learn from that or grow so let's continue so people they know inside but they don't want to hear it if i would ask their family the family if that young man or woman got the in their shoulder their family gets very angry why do you recognize that why do they get angry same thing anger is always aimed at oneself in the first place always so the family tries to clean themselves from guilt so obviously what do they avoid they avoid looking in the mirror they avoid looking at themselves and this is a very important part avoiding the mirror that means avoiding the pain the pain of discipline in the short term so uh, that pain of discipline will come after the acknowledgement that they have been very wrong and their child their dear child or their father or sister brother have died has died from it you see the point and they had uh, the possibility to know they could have done their research but they haven't done it they wanted to sit back relax and watch television as an example and this is what happened and they don't want to know that means that as long as you don't want to know you are in the victim mode you are blaming you are looking for excuses any excuses doesn't matter and all of a sudden you are also in denial and that's the worst of all you are in denial you don't want to acknowledge so you don't take ownership 
That's the point. That's that's what's this this and I'm I'm going to mention it later again. But this is exactly what will happen at the Great White Throne. Do you realize that? This is what will happen. People will be confronted with that mirror. And this time they will have to look in the mirror. They will have to take that look and it will hurt them. And they will scream. This is what will do. This is what will happen at the Great White Throne. This is a, a big part. But of course, this on in the long term is always for their own benefit. Because they will profit from it. Alright. So these are three these were three simple examples and i'm going to do i'm going to go now to a bigger one a, a real life example in that sense okay let's start you live in occupied amsterdam during the second world war when amsterdam was uh, occupied by the germans you are an unbeliever. Just make it simple. You are an unbeliever. You are married with two children. A Jewish family lives three houses down the street, man and man and woman and three children. Sometimes your kids used to play with their kids. Okay, now it comes. On a certain afternoon, there is a knock on your door. It's the Jewish family. All five of them. They explain that they could be arrested at any moment and then deported to some concentration camp. So they ask you if they could live with you for the time, only for the time being. And you have a basement where they can stay. And in your heart, you definitely want to help them. So you speak about it with your partner and they also agree, your partner also agrees to help them. So you bring them the news, the good news, they hear it and they are very happy and they move into your basement. Then, one week later, there's a knocking on the door. Yes, German soldiers. They are quite friendly. They are friendly. And of course, they ask you if there are Jews hidden in the house. And mind you, don't forget that they might come inside the house at any time, even uh, if you would lie, let's say. They could come in, into the house and search it. So the, the question is, what is your reply? That's, that's the question. That's simple. What is your reply? There are two main possibilities here, I would say. First of all, case A, you could tell the truth and say something like, yes, there's a family downstairs in the basement. And the reason of that could be that you're afraid for your life and that of your family. Understandable, of course. In this case, you play it safe for yourself and for your family, right? That's, that's case A, that's the first possibility. Case B, the second possibility is, you could tell a lie and say something like, no, there are no Jews over here. The risk of that one is that the soldiers might still come in to search the house. If they find the Jewish family, and I think they will, you and your family will also be arrested and deported to a concentration camp. In this case, you are willing to take that risk. So, what's it gonna be? Dear beloved of God, what's it gonna be? What answer would you give in this situation? Would you tell the truth? Or would you tell a lie or white lie if you want? What's it gonna be? Of course, this is the moment to pause the video. 
and uh, discuss it amongst yourselves or with yourself it doesn't matter so then I'm going to continue now because there is one right answer and in, and there is one wrong answer oh yeah one is right and the other one is wrong let's take a look and in order to let me go back in order to uh, understand the right and the wrong way we also we always sorry have to look in the long term remember this is how uh, administration is done always in the long term always if you drive a car uh, with, uh, like, with a speed of 80 miles per hour and you are on a straight road where do you look at the farthest point on the horizon on the horizon right because that's where you go at at that time that you drive so that's the point you always look long term so that's how you lead your life always in the long term you do the things that are good for you in the long term not in the short term sometimes in case of urgency you do something when it's short term yes then it's then it's quickly done because it was urgent but then you again focus on the long term always so let's look at the long term consequences suppose that you told the truth that there is a Jewish family in the house what is the long term consequence of that that decision you telling the truth you will have a fair very hard time to live with yourself the rest of your life until you die and it's possible that you forgive yourself etc that's possible but this is a normal consequence your children will come to know about this sooner or later they will come to know about this and when they do they will be ashamed of you for what you did they will avoid talking about you even long after you're gone that's also a consequence peace will flee from your life and your house and your family that's also a long-term consequence for the rest of your life also think about what will happen at the great white throne because you will be confronted with exactly this this what you did back then you will be confronted with it oh yeah you will see it happening again that's what will happen yeah that mirror will be held in front of your face and you will have to look inside that mirror so this is in the case you told the truth believe it or not let's continue now suppose that you told a lie that there isn't a Jewish family in the house suppose the soldiers still come in they search your house and they find the Jewish family in the basement what is the long-term consequence you as well as your family will also be arrested and deported to a labor camp or a concentration camp you will still be standing so even after even while being deported you will still be standing for your decision and have peace of mind and heart about it let's say you don't survive that labor camp but your children they do survive they will come to know about this sooner or later also and when your children come to know about it they will be so proud of you for the heroic thing you did whether they also um, uh, suffered from it but you did the heroic thing because you did what was your heart your decision was congruent with your heart i hope you recognize this 
Perhaps your children will write a biography about you, how you educated them and your integrity and values in life. They will be proudly talking about you even long after you're gone. Peace will remain with you and your family, no matter where you go and what happens to you. And this is not even uh, taking into account what will happen at the Great White Throne. Again, at the Great White Throne, the mirror will be held in front of you and you will see, but you will, you will not worry because you will gladly look in, into that mirror because you will see that your decisions and your heart were made of one piece. They are made or were made by, back then in one piece. You see the point. You stood behind your decision with your heart. And you, not one hair on your head, so-called, was regretting that, that decision. No matter the consequences for you and your family. This is just, of course, a, uh, I, I simplified it a little. Because there are other complicating stuff li like the partners, etc., etc. But this is just about that principle I want to lay down for you. Okay. Let's do one more slide. We're going to look now. So this is understood, right? The first, let, let, me, let me mention it. The first case that you told the truth, that is according to the law. That's the law. Can you recognize that? Because you need to do what the law says. Even if you don't want to. Even if your heart is not behind it. You have to do. You can of course wait for it. That sooner or later you will sin. Against the law. Right? However. The second one is grace. Because you did what was in your heart. You stood behind your decision. Inside out. And the law is just comply, comply, comply. No matter what you think or want or your heart wants. Doesn't matter what your conscience says. Comply. This is very important. And that's why. The law that was given to Moses, that was on the surface truly a law. Yes, the Ten Commandments, right? But under the surface, underneath the surface, it was a promise, a promise by God. And it would become one-sided. And that's what it will become in the New Covenant when it will be fulfilled when Jesus comes back. So mind this, think about it, ponder on it, because this is very important, this principle about truth and about lies. Very important. This is truth. The fact that you told that white lie, so to speak, that was standing in the truth. And the fact that you told the truth because you have to obey the law, that is you were standing in the lie. Why? Because you went against your own heart. Against your conscience. That's why. You betrayed yourself. That is standing in the lie. So I think I'm not going to go further for now. I'm going to stop this video. And next time we're going to look at some examples from scripture. So thank you very much for watching. And I hope to see you next time. Bye-bye.